Joann's happen to have a 70% off Fring's plurals. Fring, what? The heck were those words? Well, hello humans. I am very excited for a couple reasons. One, I really love um, that I get to make this video, but also you may notice I have a new setup. Again, the art on the back of my wall will change just like it did in the previous setup. If I feel like you guys are a little too far away though, I will bring the camera closer. I just kind of wanted you to see all my, my cute little things. But anyway, I'm gonna move Latso because he's kind of, he's in, in my way a little bit. He might just sit next to me for the rest of this video. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into the video because this was quite a process. Pretty much ever since I saw Exandria Unlimited and Ashley first introduced Fern, I kind of felt this gravitation to cosplay her. Sure, a lot of people did too. She's just aesthetically very pretty. But also this year, I know I wanted to cosplay more Critical Role characters. Um, in the past, the only one I've done is Caleb. He is a very special like comfort character to me. So I did that one when I first got into Critical Role a few years ago. So I guess I just decided my next one was gonna be Fern. It was almost Dorian. It was actually almost Dorian, but I don't like to do body paint if I can avoid it. She was also surprisingly a last minute cosplay. And what I mean by that is I kind of had an idea of what I was going to wear to Megacon this year in May. So then obviously me having this desire to do Critical Role, I kind of decided last minute, a month before the convention, which yes, for Fern, is very last minute. She has a lot, a lot of details in her costume, but I did it. And I knew that if I was going to do this, that there were certain things that I want to do. Is this my final draft of Fern? Absolutely not. It was just very important for me to have a not only a finished cosplay But it also a cosplay that I was still proud of and I do love my fern In fact, I cannot wait to show you the photos that I just did a few weeks ago They're gorgeous. That is and that is also very much credit to my photographer and close friend Chelsea Phenomenal. I will be linking her information so you could check out her photography page So I'm gonna go ahead and let past me take over the next step of this video as we walk through the fern creation. I will be doing some voiceovers since for some of the more time consuming parts I did time lapses and at the end I can't wait to show you my uh my photos. So this is me just cutting out the pattern pieces for the base dress that I am about to make. This is a sage green fabric that I got from Joann's which I did buy it online because I needed a large quantity of it so I can go ahead and throw that link um, wow, link. I can't talk. Should I retake that? I'm not going to. I will throw the link in the description. I know it's a slightly crooked angle, but if I sit here on this little duck next to the trash can, cannot hit me. So I have all the pattern pieces cut out. My goal for today is to stitch the base dress. I have my dress form over here, but the pattern that I have chosen for this top, um, is a bit complicated. I am also at the same time altering it so so i'm a, so i'm gonna have a lot of fun with that i've got to figure out how to put together the top but you know i figured you could sit here and watch me struggle to put this pattern together so according to the pattern the skirt and the top are not attached they're two separate pieces um, i do have enough fabric if i want to attach the top to the skirt i can We'll see, I haven't gotten that far ahead yet. Um, I think that the the skirt, the skirt is also a little bit high-waisted and I'm pretty sure that it closes with like, I'm pretty sure that they're planning on it to close with a button, but it might actually be easier to just have one zipper go down the side of the dress. But you know, I've already, but you know, I've also too spent so much money on fur and I didn't want to add the expenses of buying a pattern and the time it would take to search for one. That was just one solid dress when I could just take a top and a skirt and put them together. So, so that's why I kind of did what I did. I'm not stressed. Psh, I'm, not, I'm not stressed. This is fairly self-explanatory. It's just me pinning and then surging together the bodice. Now, the first attempt of this did not work out the way I wanted it to, so I did have to the second time revisit a different method, which you're about to see explained here. Okay, so the top is not working out the way that I want it to. I have about half a yard of fabric left, which is enough to make another top. Um, but I'm just kind of, I'm just a little frustrated with it right now. So I've decided I'm just going to move on to the skirt. Um, cause that's supposedly easier. Um, hopefully it should just only in theory, it should just be four pieces that I sew together. 
and then I have to gather it and then I will figure out what I'm gonna do with the top. I might just drape it, to be honest. I'm thinking that that might just be easier, but I wanna get one thing done today. Um, so I'm gonna do the skirt. Well, thankfully, knock on wood, I'm about to like jinx myself, but the skirt is turning out good. I'm not done. I still have two, I still have the two back panels to attach and then obviously to gather it and put it all together. But this is the front, but I'm actually using it as the side that she has that nice little leg slit. Um, and I think that it's gonna show off um, my plans for my hooves. Oh, look at that, more time-lapse footage. Um, yay, I'll spare you the whole clip. That was just me searching. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and just pleat the skirt in this clip. And that's all that I'll show you. You, you get the gist of it. I've already sprayed the silver layer on, obviously that's mostly, ooh, I was about to like throw that across the room. <gasps> oh my God. Note to self, I need to be more careful with this thing, okay? This does not want to be my friend. I can't do two things at once, guys, okay? So really the part that's mostly painted is the edge of the blade and then the handle, which I've left on the other side of the room. But um, it's just like the gold accents and then the leaves are kind of green. There's not really a whole lot to it. Another thing that I will link for you guys in the description of this video is the person that I got this 3D printed from off of Etsy. And then I just used regular craft paint to paint over it. So when I was initially fabric shopping, I did get these two um, just squares of fake fur that I was gonna use for the ears, the lighter color on the inside, the darker color on the outside. I'm pretty sure that that's whatever the reference image is. I could just cut these out of felt, um, but I don't But I don't think that they would hold the shape that I want. They would just kind of be very flat, which is fine. But I wanna try. I saw a method for a couple different projects that I think mirror this pretty well, um, that you take tin foil, mold it into the shape that you want, and then cover it in this foam clay. So it's supposed to be like lightweight, but like very sturdy. So these are 3D printed horns. So this is me doing the actual method that I just spoke about. Now, I loved working with the foam clay. It was very easy to mold and manipulate. The texture was more like putty than actual clay, but when it dried, it took 24 hours, but it was completely solid. So it was super easy to work with and I definitely wanna use it for future projects. In fact, when I do my next version of Fern, one of the things that I want to add is to my staff, which you'll see me work on in a second, I want to make a second snake head out of this clay foam. Now this clip is me painting the horns. I did just use a paint that I already have, so it's more of a washed out gray than a light brown, but I do really like the color and it turns out good in this next clip. So these are my finished horns for Fern. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys before what the horns looked like. That, that side, I was holding them backwards. That's, this makes more sense. This is how they go. Oh my gosh! I did it! I still need to add all the decor, like all the little ribbons and some flowers and stuff, but you know what? These are actually, they're not, they're not too bad. I know, I just continue to look atrocious in my pajamas. Don't worry, I'll have a glamour shot for you soon. Um, for the most part, I have completed fur and skirt. I kind of want to readjust the hem a little bit because it's not as pretty as I would hope. It's kind of dragging on the floor a little bit, but when I have my hooves on, I will be taller. So I think that it'll actually be fine with the length that it's at. It's got this lovely little, I don't know how you can see, but I believe I've shown you before the lovely little heightened skirt slit that's going on. And then this is actually gonna sit up here on my actual waistline, not my hips. So it'll sit up on my waistline and then the corset will cover the waistband part of it so you won't see any of this surging and then also too i went ahead and this is the fabric that i will be using for her little cloak in the back i feel like it's a little unnecessary for you guys to sit here and watch me hem all the edges of what i believe is four yards of fabric i'm pretty sure it's four yards so the length of it should hit the floor and then again with my hooves um, but this is four yards, so I need to gather it just so it's the length of my back, which I will measure. Once that is done, I will also need to either stitch or glue. I haven't quite decided how I want to do the flowers. 
I know that the back of this will be detachable from the top. So I've ordered off of Amagron. So I have ordered off of Amazon a sage green bralette that I was thinking about draping and pinning the fabric to that. So that way it's just more comfortable and I don't have to have this really nice silky fabric like touching my sweaty skin. I'm gonna go ahead and start gathering this because that's gonna take me a while and then I will move on to the next step and update you. These are the last set of time lapses, I promise. Um, I just wanted to show you a clip of the mountain of fabric that I worked with. And then here's just a few little clips of me gluing various flowers onto the cape as well. And then lastly, I wanted to include some time footage of me making the actual staff. This was one of my favorite props that I have made for a costume in general. I think that it just turned out so cute. Oh, JK, you know what? This is the last set. So this is me gluing the flower and the leaves onto the second attempt that I made of the bodice. Then this is a clip of me attempting to walk in the hooves for the first time. The Etsy seller will be linked in the description, but the one complaint that I do have about these is that they kept rolling down all the time. So I ended up having to buy like a nude pair of undershorts and I just stitched the leggings to the shorts, but I wish I hadn't had to do that. So I am basically just hand stitching these two pieces together, um, which is one of, but not the weirdest thing I have done for a cosplay. All right, guys, here it is. This is the part that I was most excited about. So without further ado, here is my completed fern cosplay showcased in the photo shoot that I did with Chelsea. I love that photo shoot so much. And speaking of my wonderful photographer, Chelsea, one of the next videos up on my channel will be the behind the scenes of a different photo shoot that I'm doing with her. As I'm speaking, the photo shoot is in the future, still. Should I tell you what it is? Should I just tell you what it is? Maybe I should, maybe I should just tell you. Chelsea and I are going to be doing an Eddie Munson Stranger Things photo shoot, which I'm really excited about. So that video should be up, if not next Friday, the Friday after. We're gonna do some really cool stuff with like dark, with like a dark room and some red lighting and a lot of dice things and uh, I'm just I'm just so excited but that does wrap up this video so thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed seeing me struggle to make fern like I said this is my first draft of her it definitely will not be how I end uh, the cosplay journey with her but thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video feel free to like it and if you like other nerdy things, anything on my wall or other cosplay stuff, photography, Comic-Con kind of things, uh, feel free to subscribe. I have a lot of nerdy content on my page. That's pretty much all it is. So I guess that that's it. I guess that's all I gotta say. Um, this video is probably long enough, so I'll just leave it there.